Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about two-step rev limiters, what they are and how they work. Now a two-step rev limiter very simply is just having two different stages of having a rev limiter. So you're going to have one at a lower RPM and one at a higher RPM. The lower one is typically going to be used for launch control, so when the car is stationary. And then you're going to have a second final rev limiter which is going to be at your red line or just slightly past your red line. And that's going to try and prevent, uh, you know, excessive vibration, uh, valve float from occurring, anything that could damage your engine uh, if it were to exceed red line. And so you've got two different uh, set RPMs at which you're going to have these rev limiters and so that's what two-step is so you know lots of modern cars come with launch control these are all a form of a two-step rev limiter uh, any modern car out there and it's becoming increasingly common which is a cool feature to have uh, and so you know why do you need this at a lower rpm well for launch control when you are launching to get the optimal launch you don't need all of that power you don't need to be all the way at 7000 rpm or whatever your red line may be uh, you're going to get away with lower uh, rpm as far as not having those wheels just sit there and spin and so you know you want a little bit of slip but not too much and so that's generally going to occur at a lower rpm especially if it's a two-wheel drive vehicle and so you'll set that first uh, rev limiter, something like 3,000, maybe 2,000 if it's rear-wheel drive, something like that, depending on the engine, all kinds of different characteristics. Uh, but you're going to have that earlier RPM, and that's purely going to be used for launch control. And then once you're moving, your only rev limiter is going to be that second one, which will prevent your engine from getting damaged. So how do these rev limiters work? Well, there's really two major methods that you can use in order to create a rev limiter. You can adjust the fuel or you can adjust the ignition. And so speaking of adjusting the fuel, this is uh, more commonly used in OEM solutions. Uh, so cars that you buy uh, from the dealer or wherever, uh, they're gonna be using these um, because it's a safer thing to do and also because it's better for emissions. So when you have a fuel adjustment, uh, there's two different ways this could work. You could run a lean air fuel mixture. So once you start to get uh, to red line there and you want to stop uh, the engine from increasing, you can lean out the air fuel ratio and that's going to be less fuel, which means you're going to make less power. So it's going to prevent it. It's going to start to slow it down from increasing in RPM. Then you can finally just shut off fuel completely. And by shutting off fuel completely, obviously it's not going to increase in RPM. And you know, you're going to sit there and you can adjust that. So you inject fuel just to keep it enough to keep it at that set RPM. So it'll be on off, on off, on off, and you're going to be keeping it there at that set RPM. Now, like I said, uh, the reason why this will be common for as an OEM solution is because you're not going to be injecting fuel into the exhaust uh, when you're not when you don't have the engine running. So this is going to differ with ignition control. So this is kind of an aftermarket solution, uh, which you may commonly see. There are two different methods which you can use for ignition control. You can cut ignition completely, so you're killing your spark. No spark, of course, in a gasoline engine. You're not going to have uh, any combustion occurring, but you're going to be sending that fuel out your exhaust. So as that fuel goes out the exhaust, the exhaust is hot, it mixes with oxygen once it leaves the exhaust, crackles, pops, you know, makes a little bang. Uh, and that's why two-step can be associated with seeing, you know, fire coming out the back of an exhaust. That as well as the retarding method uh, where it retards timing. So another method to reduce the engine from increasing in RPM. So while you have your piston coming up, there's an ideal time that you want that spark to ignite so that you get the maximum amount of work useful work pushing that cylinder back down, pushing that piston back down. So when the piston's on its way down, if you retard the timing and ignite that spark later, then you're not gonna get all of that useful work, and so the engine's not gonna be able to continue to rev higher. So you can retard the timing, and in doing that, uh, your engine will just float there at that set RPM. Now, this is where two-step rev limiters start to get confused with anti-lag systems. Two-step rev limiters by design are not anti-lag systems, uh, but they operate in a very similar fashion and they can have that uh, as a result of the way that they operate. So, you know, there's two different ways we're gonna look at this, uh, but basically when you're retarding the timing, that means when your piston has reached bottom dead center, you're still gonna have a high amount of pressure and high amount of temperature. That's all that wasted work because you didn't optimize when you ignited that spark. And so when you open your exhaust, you're gonna have this high pressure and high temperature uh, gas that's gonna move out. And if you do have a turbocharged vehicle, then that high pressure and high uh, pressure, high temperature, high pressure gas is going to spool up that turbo and keep it spooled up and can act as an anti-lag system while you're sitting there, you know, keeping your engine at that rev limiter uh, before you launch. 
Now, if you heavily retard the timing, meaning you know, you're waiting really late to ignite that air fuel mixture uh, so that you can keep the engine running, but you don't want it to increase in whatever RPM you've set that rev limiter at, well then when you open your exhaust, you may still have combustion occurring. So that air fuel mixture is still burning while it's going out, and then it's gonna be spooling up that turbo, and then of course, you know, it can be spitting flames out the exhaust things like that. So this is how, you know, two-step rev limiters got associated with anti-lag systems and spitting flames out the exhaust because if they do heavily retard the timing, you can be sending combustion, uh, you can still have combustion occurring in your exhaust manifold and in your turbocharger. So clearly, you know, you want to have a system that's built properly for it because you are going to be putting a huge strain on your exhaust system here. Uh, which you typically wouldn't be doing uh, by doing something like the fuel adjustment, uh, wouldn't be quite as harsh, or if you were to not retard the timing too much uh, so that you didn't have combustion occurring in the uh, you know exhaust manifold and beyond. So thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.